Today we will focus in tin chloride electrolysis. And I literally mean focus. When we apply voltage to a tin chloride solution, positive tin ions migrate to the cathode, accept electrons and become tin atoms forming metal crystals. At the same time, chloride ions migrate to the anode and release electrons to become chlorine gas. Secondary reactions to the cathode and anode produce hydrogen and oxygen respectively. These are the materials that we need to perform the experiment. We weigh 6 grams of tin chloride, 3 grams of sodium hydrogen sulfate, and dissolve them in 62 milliliters of water. Sodium hydrogen sulfate will keep the pH low enough during electrolysis. For better results, I filtered the solution and it is completely transparent. I applied voltage at maximum of 10 volts and very soon beautiful shiny tin crystals appear. I added some drops of dish soap that prevent excessive gas bubbling, but I didn't see any difference without using it. This is about 10x time lapse. Notice gas formation at the anode, which is chlorine and oxygen. Then I decided to focus deeply using a macro lens and extension rings. At this one-to-one -one magnification, crystals look like silver feathers. When I tried again the next day, I found out a white precipitate in the solution. And even after filtering, the solution was yellowish and unsuitable for a nice result. This happens because tin chloride reacts with water, aka hydrolysis, producing the insoluble tin hydroxide chloride. I repeated the experiment, this time with black background which resulted in even more beautiful pictures. With the use of a macro lens and two extension rings, I proceeded to higher magnifications.
Emerging crystals from paperclip is an evidence of electric current inside the solution. The experiment with a microscope was not really a success because of the direction of the light. The direction of the light made the crystals look more like a shadow 